Did you ever want to put googly eyes on kittens? Or on your dog? Or on that super relaxing doll sitting on the shelf next to your bed? Maybe on the most ready critter on earth? Or on your favorite YouTuber? What about on a ducky? 3D. Hi everybody, what's going on? This technique is not just useful to give some new life to flat photos, but also the same concept can be applied to animate your 3D characters. Before starting, a quick subliminal message from a special guest. To this channel, subscribe. We're gonna use Blender 2.81a. First thing first, remove everything in the scene. We go and check. If you don't have it already, you want to enable this add-on called Import Export, Import Images as Planes. Then you go to Add, Images as Planes, select your image, and automatically you will have a plane with the right ratio, so dimensions. And here you can see that your image is already mapped onto the plane. Automatically you have material with the image mapped onto it. Next step, it's rotating this image 90 degree. And now we're going to create a very simple eye, which is sphere. Let's create a UV sphere and we'll assign the first material, which is the white of the eye. And let's call it white. Then we select the top part of the sphere create a sub material and I'm gonna call it a pupil sign and now we can work at the material quickly you can do it from here or you can do it from the shader network I think from here it's much faster for this simple material let's set the normal of the object to smooth the white of the eye I want to have it very reflective and probably with some subsurface while the black of the eye I'm going to be just for a black then we rotate the eye 90 degree and then we scale it if we go on the front view we can scale it a bit better and then move it in position my suggestion is keeping a part of the eye on the back of the image, so having only some of the eye coming out of the image. This way you have a more realistic depth, even if you want to tilt slightly the image. It would also enable ambient occlusion, probably a bit stronger, so it will blend a bit better with the image. Go back to the front view, duplicate this eye, and now you have your googly eyes. Next step is creating something that will be the focus of the look of the googly eyes. So where the googly eyes are going to be looking at. Let's add an empty. I'll suggest to create an empty that shows the orientation. This one is a bit too big. Let's make it smaller and move it. Okay, now it's in front of the doggy. Next step, we want the eyes to move following the position of our empty. So we select the first eye, we go to Object Constraint Properties, and we go with Dumped Track. Target, it's our empty. As for two, we select the Z axis. Now, if we move this, you can clearly see that it's already following our object. If we select the second eye, same thing. A quicker way, if you don't want to repeat this, it's actually create the constraint between the eye and the empty first. And then let's remove this will copy directly the one with the constraint, so it will keep the constraint in the new eye. Now, if we select the empty here, we move, you can see what's going on. It's following. 
In the example in the beginning of the video with the kittens I had a ball. What I did was just having a ball. So a sphere, I had a small sphere. As you cannot see the empty rendering because they are just tool to help with the animation. But we can have a sphere which is parented to the empty. Select so sphere, the empty, command or control P object and now as we move the empty we move the ball so if we for example remove everything we still have the sphere and moving the empty but the dog is following the sphere if you prefer you can actually parent the empty to the ball that's depending on the kind of animation you're gonna do and in this case, you move the ball and the empty will follow. As you can see, those two lines, those two blue lines, dotted lines, represent the constraint to, to our empty. And they are pointing exactly in the center of this object. That means that as I move the object far, the eyes kind of look more straight. Let's do it from here. While as it comes closer, the eyes, of course, naturally get a bit crossed, which is very realistic. But if you want to achieve a more realistic movement, there's another way. We want to have two empty and constrain each eye to a different empty. So let's go from above and let's move the first empty straight in front of the first eye. Then we duplicate move the second one here then select the other eye and instead of empty it's going to be empty one now you see you have these two parallel what we can do it's also parent them one to the other and now when i move the first one I'll move both. Now it's not gonna look cross die anymore, even when it's focusing very close to, let's say here. Now it's focusing very close, but it's still not cross eyed. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you're going to use this technique, please leave a comment below with a link to your creation. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Ciao. To this channel, subscribe. Zzz.